This is Eagle Al, and today I'll be talking about Bryce Huff. Yes, he's in the lab putting in work. Also, Queen Yon Mitchell is the most important Eagle. And lastly, should we bring back Miles Sanders? Are we having a running back issue besides Saquon? But let's get straight into it. All right, so let's hop straight into it. Let's talk about Bryce Huff. Bryce Huff. Was one of those signings we like, but it's super underrated because I think we are comparing it to Hassan Reddick. But he's out in the field working. I know he was at the uh, SAT Summit with, you know, Max Crosby. I believe Warren Sapp is there, Von Miller. And yes, Bryce Huff is there putting in work. He dropped some workout video of him, you know, doing this thing. I'm gonna call it that, doing this thing, D DN type stuff. And I like to see it. I love to see it because according to Nick Sirianni, Vic Fangio, these dudes better be in the best shape of their life for training camp. Now, a lot of people say I'm hard on Bryce Huff and I don't think I am. I'm just more realistic and I know how the Eagles fan base work. Like if Bryce Huff in the season were eight and a half or nine sacks, to me, that's a decent season. That's a good season. But Eagle fans and probably even the organization like, dang, we let go Hassan Reddick, who almost guaranteed double digit sacks every single time. Now, the pressure is on him. And a lot of people say I'm easier on Nolan Smith because I look at Nolan Smith. He's a rookie. He's going into year two. I usually judge rookies. I give them three years. Year two, I expect about five or six sacks from Nolan Smith. But Bryce Huff, we coming in like, yo, replace that production Hassan Reddick had and I think that's a little unfair especially how Vic Fangio used his defensive ends I think is a little unfair but that's the expectation he's the high paid man he's the high paid man and Bryce Huff I think he's I think he's going to be good I think he's going to be really good it's just one of those things like man it sucked to see Hassan Reddick go imagine a D-line with Hassan Reddick and Bryce Huff then you have Nolan Smith rotating so that's what we comparing it to. I see a lot of people don't talk about Bryce Huff as much. Speaking of a stoic guy, yeah, he's stoic. Like he stays to himself. He put in his work. You can even hear it during his press conference. Like he talk, but he he's more like I'm a show and prove. He's probably one of those quiet leaders. Watch me as I go. But it, it's good again to see Bryce Huff out. Also, Nolan Smith. Speaking of him, he was at the sack summit as well. So you see, like the Nolan Smiths putting in the work. The Bryce helps putting in the work. Again, I love to see it because those defensive ends, man, without Hassan Reddick, somebody got to replace that production. And that's why I'm a little hard on Bryce Huff because the expectations is there. He did it one year. Can he do it again? I say yes. I think he could have another productive year. And I believe Howie Roseman, when it comes to an end, the end of the season, I think we're going to look at like, yo, he made the perfect choice he made the right choice you got a younger guy who didn't even hit his prime yet he's going to hit his prime probably within a year or two so bryce huff man keep keep working keep grinding eagle fans are going to be behind you you play good we're going to love you you play bad you know how eagle fans get so bryce huff just keep doing you all right so let's talk about queen yon mitchell so i read an article by nbc philadelphia and it had Quinion Mitchell listed as the most important eagle. I think that was a reach. I think it was a reach because uh, I don't think he's the most important. But far as the future, he could be in that top five ish as important because right now we are overloaded with cornerbacks. If Quinion Mitchell is not ready, I think we'll be fine. But Quinion is so good. Like he's too good to just have on the bench. You see me? I'm talking like, yo, put him in the slot, put him somewhere. He got to play ball because, again, he's just too talented. But the article went into and talked about like how other teams, they first rounders came in and was extremely productive or they just found a way to put him on the field. You got to think of Trent McDuffie. His rookie year, I think he was like more in the slot, even though he's an outside corner. But as you know, the veterans and stuff moved on, they moved him to the outside and Trent McDuffie been balling out. Sauce Gardner came out the gates hot you gave him like a year or two he, we was considering him what the best corner a lot of people just saying he the best corner in the league 
I think Sneed from the Chiefs. Now Tennessee Titan got something to say about that. But, you know, you can say Sauce Gardner is up there. He came out the gate super hot. Then you got Devin Witherspoon. Witherspoon, who was in the draft class with uh, Jalen Carter, came out the gates hot too with the Seattle Seahawks. So can Quinion do the same thing? And if he can, yeah, the future is bright. The future is bright, but he got to find a way to get on the field. He got to show out in camp. He got to beat somebody out. That's what he have to do. But Isaiah Rogers, man, he's he's the he's the wrench in the whatever you call it. He's that guy because, yeah, we know Isaiah Rogers is good. And I always believed in Isaiah Rogers for sure. It's like, dang, he's really that good for him to say, I want to start on the outside and beating out dudes for that spot where you got a Keely Ringo, Queen Yon Mitchell. I mean, come on. Isaiah Rogers is going to be hard for to beat him for a spot. Slay, we know he's established. I think he got one more year in him. If not, and we feel like the young guys are ready, you got to do something with the Slay thing, but I don't know. But I think Queen Yon is so talented and so good. I think he can be a slot corner. Just for now and then for the foreseeable future, move him to the outside. I like how I like how the Chiefs did it with Trent McDuffie. I ain't gonna lie. I like how they did that. Like, you know what? He's talented. He's good. I'm gonna put him here for now. Then they moved him to the outside. But you you do have to compare it to the other guys. Like Sauce was good when he came out the league. I mean, it came out of college. Devin Witherspoon, he's going into year two, but his rookie year was decent. I even mentioned Derrick Stanley. Stanley came out hot, too. Derrick Stanley came out hot, too. So they, their guys, you know, is a trend of these cornerbacks. They're not being red-shirted. You got to get them on the field. But, again, the article was just a little reach saying he's the most important. But he, he's up there. He's up there, but not now because, again, if Quinn's not ready yet, you got so many pieces, Keely Ringo, Isaiah Rogers, Slay, uh, Cooper DeGene, you, you got a lot of people that's, you know, ready to play now. You, even Avante Maddox, like, you, you got guys there if Queen Yon Mitchell is not ready. But if he is, if he's ready, you got to find a way to get him on the field. But, all right, so let's talk about the former Eagle, Miles Sanders. Uh, Miles Sanders talk is back in Philadelphia because he had a disappointing season in Carolina. So at the disappointing season, the Panthers are looking to possibly move on. He might be one of the tough cuts, but they might do it. And a lot of people saying like, well, look at the running back room besides Barkley. Can you bring back Miles Sanders, 27 year old who was, you know, productive for us? Miles Sanders just never hit that next step that we thought he could. But the Super Bowl year, he showed signs. But then it start to tail off at the wrong time. Start tailing off during the playoffs. After that Chicago game, he just wasn't the same to me. At one point, and this dude's still in my comments saying like, yo, one point you said Miles Sanders was the best running back in the league. I believe he was the best running back in the league at one point. But then he started to tail off. The Super Bowl was a epic mess for uh, Miles Sanders. He, he damn near fumbled and... You know, he, he just wasn't good in a Super Bowl and that left a sour taste in my mouth. So do I want to see Miles Sanders back? The reason why I'm saying no is not because what he did with the Eagles or how he looked with the North, uh, with the Carolina Panthers. I was about to say the North Carolina Panthers, but how he looked with them. I'm just speaking of the young guys. I like Kenneth Gainwell. I believe Kenneth Gainwell is going to get better. He's going to prove a, a lot of people wrong. I like Kendall Milton. I like Will Shipley. Will Shipley is your third round pick. You got to find a way to get him on the field. Uh, Kenneth Gainwell, you, you got to find a way to get him on the field. And uh, the Kendall Milton guy, man, I like him. If he don't make the team, he'll be a good guy to develop on the practice squad. But you you can't move one of those guys or take snaps for one of those guys for Miles Sanders. Is Miles Sanders better than those dudes right now? Possibly. Possibly. But will Miles Sanders' ego be messed with? Because we asking Saquon, you're three down back. Miles Sanders, if he come back to the Eagles, he probably only going to get like seven carries, five carries. Whereas though he can go to another team like 
I want him to go to Dallas, but you look at Dallas running back situation. Look at a lot of teams, other running um, running back situations. He could go somewhere and start, but the the Philadelphia Eagles coming back, nah, nah. Unless an injury happened, then you can consider it. But right now, absolutely not. Absolutely not. But hey, man, what do you think and how do you feel about the news today? Bryce Huff is working. That's what's up. That is what's up. Also, Quinion Mitchell is the most important eagle. Eh, no, but he got a lot to prove. And Miles Sanders, should he come back? Do Eagle Al got this wrong? But this is Eagle Al. I'm up. A-